we're here to argue that we must update the First Amendment and find the commons. We have to find the commons in a way that it shouldn't take 60,000 of us to enforce the commons. We should find the commons in a way that a much smaller group of us can stand in a place in our community with our fellows and say something in public and demand protection. Remind our local officials and remind our neighbors because so much of what is enforced is, is, is consensual. It's us enforcing with each other. Amen. Don't always defer to the electeds or to the cops. A lot of the law that gets enforced is enforced by us, maybe by our passivity, by our consumerism. Maybe when we could have been defending it, we were standing in line somewhere. We must find the commons, and it can't be done on the internet. The internet's an interesting tool. Ultimately, the, com the commons must be embodied. It's, a, it's that old-fashioned thing called human bodies. I, I'm, I'm experiencing some right here. And this feels like a commons to me. And a lot of the places that are commons places now in our society are old churches. Union churches. Episcopal churches. Some Presbyterian churches. <laughs> community rooms and churches. Follow the AA around. I've even been some in this, in this room. Communities are still finding a place to meet. But we can't hide the First Amendment. The First Amendment needs to be stated out. Out in the public. Out in the public air. We've got to be able to make fools out of ourselves. I want to be a, I want to be a, a, a preacher. I want to be a preacher. <laughs> who's got some licks like, like Jimmy Swagger, amen, praise me. <laughs> but I want progressive stuff to come out of my face. Yeah. I want to be a fool. I want to be a fool for peace. Yeah. Why well, started doing this project? Sidney Lanier is an Episcopal priest, and he left the, left the, you know, he wasn't a vicar for decades by then. He was Tennessee Williams' cousin. He, he knew about the importance of commons in worship life. He knew about, he knew the First Amendment backwards and forward, and he saw it dying. in cooperation with the Disney Company. It was Mickey and the Cops. <laughs> and they were privatizing the sidewalks and streets of Times Square, which is supposed to be an international commons. Amen, somebody? An international commons, a place where we meet and discuss the culture. Used to be 300 plays every year open there. They said, no, this is going to be a Super Bowl. It's got to be outdoors. We're going to clean it up. Anybody that doesn't seem to have a credit card is going to be in jail, in a hospital, in a shelter, out of here. And they have endeavored to do that. And Sydney said, what we're going to do is we're going to identify the devil, the real devil, and we're going to talk about the devil in public. And he put me in front of the, the Disney star at 42nd and Broadway. <laughs> Mickey Mouse is the Antichrist killer. I don't want you to bring your little tourist family into this den of iniquity. We got nothing on these shelves but sweatshop products. And after a while, we had groups of people out on the sidewalk. 
And we'd hand the microphone around. We would have town hall meetings about consumerism. They're on the sidewalk. And if you watch the, the business improvement district people and the so forth, they come up and they, they started, as word got around that there was, you know, this preacher that wasn't like the other preachers, and, and that there were these groups of people discussing consumerism, discussing the Disney company, discussing, discussing everybody getting arrested who was interesting. Uh, a person of color who was reciting a monologue at no, no discernible audience was, was going to go to jail. That's what made Fort Hughes, 42nd Street, our community, an interesting place. We needed that wildness. We needed those characters. Let's not be ashamed of them. They are in us too. They're good people. Some of them are dangerous. Life is dangerous. There's some of them dangerous in this place. David Rose is dangerous. With his unexpressed childhood televangelist dreams. right now. The biggest headlines, it's really one headline, but it's kind of got two ways of looking at it. And one is the earth, and the other is the war. They're the same thing. Nothing is more damaging to the earth, including people who are also the earth, amen, than war. But right now we got a signal from climate change. We have an emergency. The average American citizen has ingested war as an acceptable product. The way that we said it was okay if our main street gets destroyed by a glowing big box out of the edge of town. The way we've accepted a lot of things in this culture that somehow became normalized by the avalanche of corporate marketing, and by the paid-for electives that make it possible, that codify it into law. War is becoming something the average American accepts. It's, it's not discernible from a video game. I know you've been upset you've watched how a football game elides into a video game, elides into news about the war. On the, front, on, the, on, the front, on the front of the newspaper, we see, we see children bleeding from bullets that we financed. But that's not the way it's coming to most of us. The way out. The way, the way back to a, a conscience for all of us is to find our common. Because we've lost the ability to speak about peace in a way that can be heard. That's a severe thing to say. Among peace workers, I believe that. When I stand at the Quaker Cemetery at Prospect Park, let peace prevail on this earth, there's the, there it is in nine languages. I just thank those people for their lives. I say, your lives, your stubbornness, your work, your ability to leave it in the unknown. I feel it in me right now. And today I promise you I'm going to do something for peace. I'm going to do something for peace today. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to make a fool out of myself. I might, I might do something counterintuitive, but I'm going to do it today.